coming to judge. And if we are fake, if we are pretending, if we are not real, he will purge us and send us to hell. So are we real today? J.C. Ryle says, at present, we must all be aware the vast majority of professing Christians care nothing at all about the return of Christ. They have no sense of sin. They have no love to Christ. They know nothing about being born again. Repentance and faith and grace and holiness, they are mere words to them. Is it all just words or are you real today? When Christ comes, friends and family cannot save you. Many people rest in other people for their salvation. My mom goes to church, so I'm a Christian. My dad's a Christian, so I'm a Christian. I'm a Baptist, so I'm a Christian. I'm a Methodist, I'm a Presbyterian, so I'm a Christian. I read good reformed literature, I'm a Christian. I, I have been slayed in the spirit, so I'm a Christian. You're, re you're relying in other things rather than Christ. Rather than relying upon Jesus, rather putting your confidence in Jesus Christ. Any confidence that is not in him is false confidence. Your faith, your trust, your belief has to rest in Christ. Matthew 25 verse 9. O foolish one said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps have gone out. The foolish virgins wanted to borrow oil from the wise virgins. And many of us want to borrow from our family and say, oh, I'm Christian because my family is. Oh, I'm a Christian because I'm in the Reformed Church. Or I'm a Christian because I'm a charismatic. Or I'm a Christian because I'm a Baptist or a Methodist. But no, you're a Christian because you trust only in Christ and you rest in him. You can't borrow your spirituality from anybody else. You have to look to Christ for yourself. When Christ comes back, it doesn't matter who you know. It's whether you know him, whether you believed in him, whether you have been obedient to him. Not whether you go to a Reformed church, not whether you go to a charismatic church, not whether you go to a Baptist, an Anglican, a Methodist, a Presbyterian. It doesn't matter what church you go to. What matters is do you know Christ yourself? Do you Have you believed in him? And fourthly, fourthly. When Christ comes, there'll be no more chance to be saved. One writer, Barney, says this, In my room, stoned on drugs, I suddenly felt like I was going to die. I knew then I was going straight to hell. And Barney gave his heart to Jesus and he got saved. He got born again. He came into new life, new power, new glory. He came into a knowledge of Christ. Matthew 25, 12, it says, Later, the others also came, Sir, sir, they said, Open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. And if you're not born again today, if you don't know Christ today, Jesus will say to you, I don't know you. And you'll be cast into outer darkness. You'll be cast into eternal fire. You'll be cast into hell because Jesus will say, I don't know you. And it is imperative, it is important that you are born again today. And you're born again today by repenting, turn away from sin and believe that Jesus Christ died on a cross for you, died for your sin. Matthew 25, 41, 42. Then... He will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and the angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. And I was thirsty and you gave me nothing. But it's no good just saying you believe in Jesus. Has he changed your life? Are you a loving person? Do you care about people? Because Jesus says, go away. I don't know you because you've not lived the life. And we have to live it today. We have to live that life in humility, humbleness, love and care. We have to live it. We have to care for people. We have to have a life of loving those around us in humility. And if we don't have that, we are going to go to hell. We have to rest in Christ and believe in Christ 
for our salvation. That is our confidence that we're saved by grace. But grace that is not working out in practice is but a delusion. Ask God to give you a heart that loves people. Ask God to change you. Ask Him. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the day of salvation. It's today. You need to believe in Christ. It's today you need to turn away from your drugs. It's today you need to turn away from your prostitution. It's today you want to turn away from money, 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 and me, 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 and trying to get in the rat race and trying to push people down and trying to be the top dog. It's now you need to be saved. It's now you need to know Christ. Now you need to forsake sin. Not to laugh, not to mock God, not to play around with sin, not to walk in your ways. But it's now you need to repent. Now you need to trust. Because if you don't trust now and he comes back, you're going to go to hell. Reverend Thomas says the Holy Spirit comes directly from God. Grace and salvation comes directly from God. We cannot borrow them from other men. We, we can't borrow them. You have to trust Christ yourself. To Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 and 5. The end is here. The last days are here. The Lord could come back at any time. Are you ready? We have been drugged by the secular age. We are too interested in living for this world. We are too interested in enjoying this world. We are too interested in that, and we do not know the glory is to come. We do not live for the glory of heaven, for the glory of eternity, for the glory of our God, to be with him forever. We do not live in that kingdom. We are living in the world and the mind of the world. But it says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 and 5, But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. They're in the last days. Christ could come back at any time. Matthew Henry says the second coming of Christ is the center in which all the lines of our religion meet, also in which the whole of divine life is constant reference to Matthew Henry. The second coming of Christ is the center in which all the lines of our, relig lines of our religion meet, and to which the whole of divine life has constant reference to. The doctrine of the second coming of Christ is a doctrine not taught today in the church. But Christ is coming back. He is the center of history. And you will do well to remember that. Men will not have the last say on history. But Christ Christ is coming back for his church. He's coming back for his people. Are you ready? I say again, are you ready? Look up to your God, for salvation is nigh. God bless you and thank you for listening. And may God bless this message to you. Please pray for me. My website is jasonburnspreacher.com. jasonburnspreacher.com. And I need your support and prayers. That God will bless the ministry of the proclamation of his word. For we are advancing the kingdom of God today by the power of his Holy Spirit. So pray that God will continue to bless the work here in Manchester. And we will be praying that God will bless you in the work that you are doing. Let us focus on Christ. Let us focus on the word. Let us depend upon the Holy Spirit. Let us defend and contend for the faith once for live, delivered to the saints. 
Let us not grow weary in well-doing. Let us make, proclaim, and make way for our God. We will not capitulate to the modern age, but we will continue to stoutly proclaim the wonders of Christ and his glories. Awake, my friend. Awake, my friend. The time is near, and it's time for you to be a man, my son. It's time for you, my dear lady, to be a woman of God in this dark hour. Arise and serve your God for your generation. Arise and serve and look for the coming of your Savior. Let's pray. Dear God, we are nothing today and we're sinners. We deserve nothing. We are proud. And Lord, we have fallen asleep and we are foolish. We confess every sin today and I acknowledge that you're our God. Bless your people today, O oh God. Strengthen them in the name of Jesus. Bless them, O oh God. Be with us all now. May God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one, be with you all. Amen. God bless you.